controversial former Speaker Peter Slipper has decided to recontest his Queensland seat as an independent at the federal election. Mr Slipper says the past 18 months have been extremely difficult for his family and admits he has a David and Goliath fight on his hands. We're up against the major parties. Uh, we'll do the best that we can and we're hoping for a good result on September 7. Peter's wife Inga Slipper took the opportunity to defend her husband and their marriage. Yes, I am supporting him. He has made some mistakes, but he is a really good guy. Mr Slipper is up against Liberal National Party candidate Mal Braff. All right, let's cross now to Treasurer Chris Bowen on the campaign trail in Sydney. Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey on the campaign trail in Melbourne. Good morning, gents. Chris, first to you. Why would Peter Slipper think he has any hope of retaining his seat? Well, that's a matter for Peter, Koshy. Um, he's entitled to run. He's entitled to put his case forward. Uh, nobody should take any seat for granted. Uh, we've got a good candidate, Bill Gassain, uh, there in that seat. So everybody's, everybody's entitled to run. You know, there's been a lot of commentary about Peter's wife. Well, wives and, and spouses in politics uh, put up with a lot and every so often they want to speak out. And it's, it, in the, at the end of the day, we're all human beings with human feelings in politics and um, seeing a bit of that human emotion on display is not necessarily such a bad thing. Um, Chris, she, ha she may have put up with more than, uh, more than most. Fair Joe, cool. um, do you think it was an interesting decision by Inga to, to speak out about her husband the way she did? Was it a good strategic mo move? Well, uh, that's up to her. I, look, Peter Slipper uh, left the LMP. He did a deal with Julia Gillard to become the Speaker, uh, and Kevin Rudd negotiated with him to uh, try and hold on to power. Uh, we don't want to have anything to do with him, and he's entitled to run, and the people will make their, their call. OK. All right, guys, uh, let's move on to the C word dogging both parties. That is Costings. <laughs> Tony Abbott was questioned about this again last night. Have a look. People will be under no doubt when they go to the polls exactly how much we're going to spend, exactly how much we're going to save, uh, and exactly how the budget bottom line will be better off overall. OK, Joseph, the buck stops with you on this. Why don't you reveal the costings now? Because we haven't announced all of our policies now. Uh, so. It's I think it's pretty logical that you don't announce uh, the costings for policies that you haven't announced. So over the next three weeks, we'll roll out our agenda as is appropriate, as has always happened in every election from both parties, and we'll reveal our costings then. In the interim, we'll also announce uh, savings, we'll announce uh, how we're going to do it and how we're going to undergo a thorough process okay. so to ensure under, that we stop that the logic. Under that yep. logic, you could release a policy on the last day of the campaign and do the costings the night before. Is that the plan? How much time are you going to give us to actually analyse it all? Koshy, there's no one better than you when it comes to finance, and I know you could do it within minutes. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, flattery will get you everywhere. Um, I think it will. I think Look, it will in this case. Yeah, <laughs> Chris. Chris, the budget is massively in deficit. Why do you keep making it worse and then uh, criticising the other side for what, you, for, for what you say they will do in making cuts? Well, what's really going on here? What's really going on here is that the Liberal Party's been at sixes and sevens on this and they know what they're going to cut. They know their costings. They, they've told us already that they've put 200 policies into the Parliamentary Budget Office. Now Joe's saying he needs another process. What's all this about? It's because if they really told us early enough where they're going to cut, they're afraid that people won't vote for them. That's what's going on here. No. Because they're going to have to cut health and schools and basic services no, to, to fill their black hole. Now, we know what happened last time. Last time Joe did a DIY costing. Uh, he outsourced it to an accountancy firm. Then they got fined afterwards for professional misconduct. And the Department of Finance found that 9 out of $10 in the savings they were wrong after the election. So, okay. really, they, they, this is not good enough. There is a process right. in place. It's called the Charter of Budget Honesty. Peter Costello introduced it. We're complying with it. Why is it so hard for Joe? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I get a word in here? Uh, well, the, you know, the fundamental bottom line is this. Every number Labor has put out over the last six years has been wrong. Okay. And on the one hand there, Chris was saying they haven't put out any savings yet. We said we're getting rid of the $10 billion clean energy fund we're not going to proceed with an increase in the refugee intake to 20,000, which saves over a billion dollars. 
We said we're not going to spend $180,000 on a study for ergonomic chairs for one department. So we're going to stop the waste. Uh, we are going to make savings, but importantly, we're going to leave the budget bottom line better okay. off. And all, Joe, those, all those aren't enough, Joe, and you know it, and you, you know you're well, going to have to cut further to fill your budget hey, Joe, back Joe, will you, you guarantee it, you won't cut health or education? Well, Koshy, I'm not going to give any on-the-run guarantees. I don't do that. But I, said, I say to you in education, we said that we are going to match the government on education spending over the next four years. And we okay. said that. But so you know you're the interesting thing? That. Can I just... Can I just make one so other point guarantee. on education? Uh, the government, the government cut $1.2 billion uh, in education and school funding between the economic document Chris released a few days ago and the one released by Treasury this week. You just know that's not true, billion dollars. You know that. You know, I'm sorry, you, know you that's cut not out true. the funding. You know you that's not true. Funding. We've been negotiating you with the out... states. We've been okay. negotiating with states for months, Joe. You, and you, you cut know... out the funding. States have had plenty of opportunities to sign up for that funding, Joe. All you right. know that. Jim, right. you know just, that. I just want to, Joe. Um, <laughs> thank you, uh, I just want to ask you, Joe. You're uh, you've spoken to Seven Sunday Night coming up this weekend, this Sunday night, about your battle with weight and uh, lap band yeah. surgery. Um, no, looking forward to seeing surgery. that. Uh, how much weight have you lost so far? Uh, well, I've lost a bit. It, I don't think that was the purpose of the whole interview. It wasn't about weight loss. I think it was a bit more than that. But, uh, look, it is, yeah, they've followed me around for a few months and uh, it'll, I'm, I'm going to go for a walk when it's on because I don't think I can watch it, but I'm sure <laughs> others will. We'll be watching. <laughs> yes, right. we'll be watching. Have a <laughs> Labor Party, I'd expect. It looks very interesting, Joe. Yeah, and playing touch yeah. footy with Fitzy. That's a sight. Yeah, That's yeah, a yeah. Too. yeah. All right, I hope guys. you're nice about me, Koshy. Yeah, no, absolutely. You'd look good in a bandana, too. All right, guys, we'll <laughs> see you next week. Good luck on the campaign trial to both of you this week. Thanks, guys. Now, people living in...